Okay, hello everyone. My name is Petteri Kivimäki. I'm the CTO of Nordic Institute for Interoperability Solutions. It's very nice to be here today. I remember that the last live presentation that I gave was in October 2019. <laughs> Since then, I've, I've given over 20 online presentations and quite many times never seeing the audience. So really good to be here today. Uh, today my topic is secure data exchange in digital government context. And, and first, uh, if we think about uh, data exchange in digital government context, at the high level you can divide it into two different categories. First of all, uh, national data exchange, meaning uh, data exchange between different public authorities and between pop public authorities and, and private companies. And of course, there are several subcategories when you think about the national context. Uh, there are so many different ways how it can be organized, but that's, that's not essential today. Uh, but the other uh, high-level category is cross-border data exchange. Uh, which means that uh, public authorities of two different countries are exchanging data. Uh, and when we think about those two categories, uh, uh, usually administrative and legal questions, uh, they are uh, a lot more challenging when it comes to cross-border data exchange. On a national level, they are usually more straightforward. But then there is also the technical side of things, and uh, if you get data moving from A to B once, uh, in general, it's, it's easier, uh, easy or easier at least to get it moving again. And, in, uh, uh, and when it comes to uh, the, uh, the technical side of the data exchange, there are several solutions that can be used. Some of them are more specialized on cross-border data exchange, while others are uh, national data exchange. And then there are also solutions that can do both. And today I'm going to tell you about one of those that can do both. And uh, it means that we are talking about X-Road data exchange layer. So X-Road is a data exchange layer solution that provides secure and unified way to exchange data between multiple organizations. Uh, X-Road is published as open source under the MIT license, and it's also a digital public good verified by the Digital Public Good Alliance. Uh, <coughs> security is kind of the core of X-Road, what, what it is and the, the reason why you would like to use X-Road. But I won't go into the details now, you will hear more about them later. Then X-Road is also an enabler uh, when it comes to implementing the once-only principle. And the once-only principle means uh, that the citizens should uh, provide with their data uh, to public authorities only once, and then in case uh, another authority needs the same data, the data is exchanged between the public authorities, meaning that the citizen doesn't need to provide with his address multiple times uh, to different authorities. Then <coughs> X-Road is also very scalable. Uh, you can start small or go big immediately. So uh, X-Road is based on decentralized architecture and it's, it's really easy to scale the implementation. The in implementation is also very flexible, meaning how, how you want to deploy it. Uh, in the beginning, I talked about different ways how to handle data exchange on a national level. Well, when it comes to X-Road, the most typical way to deploy X-Road is, is to have one national X-Road ecosystem and then all public authorities, private companies, all kind of organizations can join it. And this is how it has been implemented, for example, in Estonia and in Finland. Uh, but then there are uh, countries uh, that are federal states uh, and another model to deploy X-Road is that those different states can uh, independently deploy their own X-Road ecosystems. And it means that, uh, well, 
all the states within the same uh, federal state could have their uh, own X-Road ecosystems and then they are connected. Or it can also be that the states uh, end up using different data exchange solutions. Some of them use X-Road, some of them use something else. And then, of course, also uh, uh, domain-specific implementation model is supported. For example, in Estonia, there is the uh, Estonian electricity grid operator Ellering that has deployed an X-Road ecosystem for European electricity grid operators for sharing electricity metering data. So all, all these kind of different models are, <coughs> all are possible. The technology doesn't set any kind of limitations to them. But then... Um, to understand better what X-Road uh, really is and how it works, uh, the best way to understand it is to compare it to point-to-point -point integrations. So on the left-hand side, you can see uh, how point-to-point how -point integrations work. Well, you probably are familiar with them, uh, but the main point here is that uh, every time when you build a new point-to-point -point integration, you have to agree on all the details of the integration and, and of course, configure, set up everything. And then in the long run, uh, if, if you have a lot of point-to-point -point integrations, uh, maintaining them, it, it can be really complicated. And especially uh, if you want to enforce some specific let's say, security policies on a national level. If you use point-to-point -point integrations, then it's, it's really challenging to enforce those policies. Uh, but of course, uh, it doesn't mean that point-to-point -point integrations are always bad. If you have only very few information systems or very few connections between them, then point-to-point -point integrations may be a feasible solution. But when thinking about uh, a case where uh, there are there is a larger number of information systems and, and connections between different information systems and and also when uh, when uh, policies need to be enforced, then X road is is a very good alternative. Uh, so uh, the idea is that when X road is used, information systems are not uh, connected to each other directly but instead uh, they are connected through unified access points called security servers. As you can see from the right-hand side diagram, we have three organizations. All of them have their own security servers and their information systems are, are connected uh, to each other through the security server. So the security server is kind of an access point gateway uh, to the outside world. Uh, that uh, guarantees that connections always, always uh, use the same security policies, configurations, and, and of course provide uh, also a bunch of, bunch of other features. And uh, those features that X-Road provides, uh, here's, here's some of them mentioned. So for example, address management and message routing. Uh, well, the idea in X-Road is that uh, all the different entities, meaning organizations, security servers, services, uh, they have identifiers. And when services are invoked or access rights are managed, it happens through those identifiers. And thanks to that, uh, service consumer doesn't need to know uh, where the service uh, that that uh, is being invoked is, is actually located. It's enough to know the identifier of the service and uh, send a request to the security server and security server does the routing, routing under the hood, which means uh, that the physical network location of the service may be uh, changed by the service owner and uh, it doesn't affect the consumers. And same goes with, the, with certificates. So uh, certificates, of course, they need to be renewed every now and then. 
and uh, depending on the configuration, sometimes changing a certificate on the service provider side may require changes to all the con consumers. Uh, but with X-Road, uh, that's uh, never the case, since X-Road takes uh, care of uh, distributing the certificates to all the parties of the ecosystem. Well, uh, access rights management, uh, when a service provider publishes service to X road, the service provider, the service owner, uh, remains in control who is allowed to access the service. Publishing a service to X road doesn't mean that uh, all the other members of the eco ecosystem can automatically access it. Then organization level and machine to machine level authentication, uh, X road uses certificates. So every security server has an authentication certificate and every organization has a signed certificate. Uh, and those are used to authenticate the security servers and, and organizations. So X Road, thanks to this, X Road is kind of a trusted peer to peer network of, of organizations. Um, data transfer is en encrypted on transport level between the security servers and all the, s uh, all the messages that are sent, they are digitally signed, timestamped and locked, which means that X-Road provides uh, an evidence of, of every transaction that, that has been processed. And that, uh, that log record, it can be even used as an evidence afterwards if, if there is a dispute regarding some transaction. And the log record tells uh, what data was exchanged, who were the data exchange parties, and when did the transaction take place. And here is a diagram that illustrates the X-Road architecture, and this is a simplification. Here we have just two organizations with their security servers and, and then, of course, the central components. But in the real X-Road ecosystem, of, we have one set of central components, uh, but the number of organizations and their security servers, well, depending on the size of the ecosystem, it can be tens or it can be hundreds. Uh, but the main idea here is that we have a data requester, data provider, they have their own security servers, and uh, the data flows directly between the data requester and, and data provider. Uh, no third parties have, have access to the data. And the security servers, they take care of those features that were listed, listed in the previous slide. And uh, of course, uh, the central components, they are there for a reason too. They don't have a, an active role in the data exchange, but they play a very essential role when it comes uh, to establishing trust in the ecosystem. So when a new organization joins, uh, it must go through an onboarding process during which uh, the certificate for the security server and uh, the sign certificate for the organization, they, they are applied and issued by the trust service providers. And once uh, the organization has the certificates, it can complete the onboarding process and it becomes registered on the X-Road central servers. And once it has been registered there, only after that, it can start to exchange data with other members of the ecosystem. So even if X-Road is uh, open source, anyone can download the software, install it. Uh, but when we think about an existing ecosystem, uh, for example, in Estonia, uh, you can just download the software and, and become a member of the ecosystem just like that. You have to go through the onboarding process during which your identity is verified. And thanks to that, uh, the ecosystem is, is trusted and we know the identities of other data exchange parties. And usually the trust service providers, they are uh, external uh, commercial service providers. Well, uh, here is another diagram about the X-Road architecture. Basically, uh, it, 
it communicates the same thing as the previous one, but uh, it's just a little bit more, more technical and underlines that the data really flows directly between the uh, service consumer and, and service provider. Well, uh, then about security, uh, when it comes to the security features provided by the X-Road software, uh, I think I've, I have already covered those, but few words about the X-Road development and how, how security, uh, what kind of role security plays in that. So we have a public bug bounty program on the Integrity platform. Anyone can participate, uh, participate it. But then uh, we run regular security assessments by, by a third party, uh, usually at least once a year, or uh, when there are bigger changes in the architecture or, or new bigger features are, are being introduced. Then source code reviews, they are a normal part of our development process. So uh, uh, merge requests, they are never, never being merged before someone else has, has reviewed it. And, and that, that applies to everyone in the development team. Then we do threat modeling. And uh, usually when there is a new feature, bigger change in the architecture. We have a uh, threat modeling session or, or several of them internally trying to recognize potential threats uh, related to the change. And then, of course, we utilize automation as well. So static source code analysis and automated dependency checks are, are being run all the time. Besides uh, the technical side, X-Road uh, also has its own governance model. So the organization that uh, runs the X-Road ecosystem and is kind of the owner of the ecosystem is the X-Road operator. And the X-Road operator defines the rules and, and policies uh, that the members of the ecosystem must follow. And the operator also decides who can become member of the ecosystem. For example, in Estonia, the X-Road operator is the Estonian Information System Authority, and in Finland, it's the Finnish Digital Agency. And in the, um, in the electricity uh, grid operator case, in that case, uh, the X-Road operator is the Estonian electricity grid operator. Uh, so. Uh, they, they decide how to run the ecosystem. And when organizations join the ecosystem, they go through an onboarding process from technical perspective, uh, but administratively, they also must sign uh, an ac a service agreement with the operator. They must agree with the, with the uh, rules and, and policies of the ecosystem. And the member organizations, they can be service consumers, service pro or service providers, or, or both. And uh, when you set up the security server, uh, you, can do, uh, you can use it for all these different roles. The software doesn't set any, any lim limitations to it. And then, of course, when two uh, member organizations start to exchange data, uh, they need to have a, an agreement as well, just like you would need to have it without X-Road or, or regardless of the technical solution that you use to exchange data. Service consumer and service provider usually need to have an, have an agreement. Of course, open data is an exception, but if we think about something, uh, something uh, more confidential, for example, personal data, vehicle data, what base registries that the public sector organizations have, and then finally, we have the trust service providers. Usually, like I mentioned, they are commercial service providers uh, and the X-Road operator uh, needs to have an agreement with them about providing services to the ecosystem. Another alternative would be to set up those components. Uh, the X-Road operator could set up those comp components by itself using available open source tools. That's also, also an option. 
And here uh, here's a diagram out about the trust federation uh, that I already mentioned. It means connecting two X-Road ecosystems to one another. And in practice, it means that when two X-Road ecosystems are connected, then the member organizations, they can exchange data with each other as if they were members of the same X-Road ecosystems. Uh, and in practice, first, the central components of X-Road, they need to be connected. It's very simple operation, takes like 30 minutes if you know what you are doing, one hour if, if you have to study it first. And, and after that, uh, the member organizations can start to exchange data. But it's good to keep in mind that uh, federation, especially if we are talking about federating two national ecosystems, it's, it's not only about technology. Uh, administrative and legal things play a big role. So uh, on the operator level, there is a federation agreement usually needed. So it's an agreement between the operators that, hey, we connect our ecosystems and what, what kind of rules must be followed and, and so on. And since it's the, and when it's done between two uh, public authorities coming from different countries, uh, the process might require some, some time. And uh, in, in this case, uh, some time means rather months than days or, or weeks. Uh, the Finnish and Estonian ecosystems, they have been federated and this, this kind of setup exists be between them. But also in that case, uh, the, the hardest part was the agreement part, uh, at least from an engineer's perspective. But then a few words about the <coughs> X-Road community. So X-Road is, is not a new solution. Uh, it, it, its first version was actually released already in, in 2001 uh, by the Estonian government. Back then it wasn't open source. Uh, it, it was published open source in, in 2015. Uh, but of course, already before that, since it was widely used in Estonia, there was a uh, pretty big uh, Estonian user community. And the community had annual meetings already back then. And this, is, uh, this picture was taken from the X -Road, Estonian X-Road community meeting in, in 2015. Uh, then NIS was established in, in 2017. We took over the X-Road development back then and we took uh, over also facilitating the community. And since then, uh, the number of community members, uh, when, when we took it over, the number was around 50 or so. And this year we are expected to reach 1,500 members. Of course, these are not all active members. These numbers are taken from uh, the X-Road community Slack. It doesn't mean that we have 1,500 members talking there daily, uh, but we have uh, 1,500 registered members. Of course, the number of active members, it's, it's lower, but still it, it illustrates pretty nicely how the, how the community has, has developed. And also the community event has uh, developed quite much. Is it has become a truly uh, international event. This uh, picture was taken in Helsinki in 2019. Uh, I don't remember uh, how many countries we had in 2019, but I remember that uh, during the last two years when the event was organized online, uh, we had uh, participants from over 15, five, zero countries, and it, it's a huge number. Uh, but of course, uh, with, with live events, uh, the number of different countries is, is lower because, well, it takes a lot of time to travel to Europe for, for one day event. <coughs> and here we have the X-Road world map. Uh, you can see where X-Road has been deployed. So these purple X-Road logos, they 
they are countries where X-Road is already being used. So as you can see, pretty, uh, quite, pretty big community in Latin America, also some users in Asia. Then of course we have uh, the NIS member countries there and these these X-Road logos, they mean that in those countries uh, there is some kind of a consultation phase going on or, or there's some kind of an interest for X-Road, but it, it of course doesn't mean that they are going to implement X-Road for sure. Maybe, maybe not, but, but still. And then uh, when it comes to uh, X-Road support, of course, uh, the community uh, is a very important source of support for any open source software. Uh, but then uh, we also have uh, some commercial support available. So these are X-Road technology partners. Uh, these are all companies that have worked with X-Road before. Some of them have uh, done X-Road core development. Some of them have done deployment. Some of them have connected services to X-Road. So diff different kind of backgrounds. And it's also very nice to see uh, that there are companies from many different countries because initially uh, to 2017 only Estonia, Estonian and Finnish companies had some experience, but now there are also Icelandic and uh, Mexican, and maybe one was from Argentina, uh, from, so from South America in any case. So commercial support is also available. Then about X-Road uh, development. So X-Road is being actively developed. Uh, we have a, a development team of six people. Uh, we use agile development methods and the vision uh, defines the main uh, areas where we are focusing. So making X-Road more modular, easy to use, cloud native, secure and sustainable. They are our, our main focus areas at the moment. And uh, in November, we released a new major version of X-Road, X-Road 7 Unicorn. And uh, this year and next year, we, we continue to uh, develop it. Uh, usually, we release a couple of new versions a year. Well, nowadays, it, it <laughs> may sound a very small number since uh, many many organizations and, and many, many software are deployed using, using a very different deployment schedule daily or, or even hourly. Uh, but since X-Road is a distributed solution and all the member organizations, uh, they have their own security servers, they need to run the updates. Uh, if, if we release a new version even weekly, uh, then they, they pretty soon they are all running very old versions. So for practical reasons, we have decided to release only, only two ver versions per year and still uh, some members uh, are, are not upgrading on, on time. We support each version for one year more or less and uh, yeah, there are users that are, are lagging behind and, and using unsupported versions. But still, I think this kind of a release schedule is, is pretty good in general. But then uh, a few words about uh, NIS, Nordic Institute for Interoperability Solutions. So I've already mentioned some details about NIS. Uh, NIS is a non-profit association established in 2017, originally uh, by the governments of Estonia and Finland. Uh, today we have three members since Iceland joined us in, in, two, in 2021, yes, last year. And our uh, mission is to develop digital government solutions to our members. Uh, X-Road is, is our main product. Uh, but we have uh, other uh, products as well, and in, in the future there, there might be more, more products, but it, uh, we, we really don't know yet. So basically, 
uh, we, we do what our members uh, ask and, and wish us to do. And our funding also comes from our members, so every member uh, has an me annual member fee and our, our budget comes from those, those member fees. Our responsibilities regarding X-Road are listed here. Uh, basically, we are the software vendor of X-Road, uh, but since X-Road is open source, of course, we are, we are not selling anything. But when thinking about the responsibilities, we are, we are doing all the same things. And in addition to uh, development activities, uh, of course, we facilitate the collaboration between NIS members and we also participate in uh, different kind of interoperability initiatives in, in Europe. For example, NIS is a member of the GAIA-X uh, ISBL and we, we participate in, in GAIA-X activities too. And here's the governance model of NIS. So uh, the highest decision-making body of NIS is the general meeting. Our members are represented there by, uh, by ministries, in, in practice usually government CIOs. Then we have uh, the advisory group uh, that doesn't have real decision-making power, but its role is to support us in, in operational questions and kind of be, be the bridge between the general meeting and the op operative level. And then we have the X-Road working group that is uh, the platform for day-to-day -day collaboration of the X-Road development. So, for example, uh, when we uh, talk about new features that we, we develop uh, to give a practical ep example uh, of, of how the decision-making goes and uh, how, how these different groups participate in decision-making. If we talk about implementing a new feature for X-Road, let's say that it's, it's something bigger that requires uh, a significant amount of funding, more than one or two sprints. So, First of all, uh, the, uh, the feature is first discussed in, uh, in the working group and, and advisory group. Then uh, the general meeting will make a decision regarding uh, the funding because our, for our members it's, it's an investment. Uh, so they decide about the funding, which means whether the feature is implemented or not. Then uh, when we are actually working on the implementation at the working group level, we discuss on the technical details how it should be implemented and how it should, should actually work. So uh, the working group is, is really the, the level of, of practical collaboration on, on technical things. And community uh, is not mentioned here but we are about to launch a new working group, X-Road uh, technical expert group that is open for all the community members. Uh, because uh, even if uh, the community, it has grown quite quickly during the last years, uh, 1,500 members now, uh, but still we are not receiving too many contributions from the community and, and we really uh, wish to activate the community more to, uh, so that it would have a bigger role in, in the development. And the X-Road Community Expert Group is, is one way uh, how we try to achieve that. And here's finally the uh, development model illustrated. So the main point here is that since X-Road is open source, uh, anyone can, can contribute. Uh, the contribution can mean, of course, source code contributions, uh, but also submitting enhancement requests and development requests. And no matter who has submitted the request, it is always evaluated according to the same criteria. So uh, the working group evaluates the uh, enhancement requests and uh, feature requests and uh, well, if 
uh, if they can be implemented uh, with, let's say, reasonable effort, then uh, the working group uh, may, may make the decision. Then if, if it requires a bigger, bigger investment, then uh, it, uh, it will be discussed in the upper levels as well. But uh, anyways, uh, regardless of the level where, where it is discussed, uh, those enhancement requests that are approved, uh, they are, uh, of course, uh, then added to the backlog and, and prioritized. And approving uh, a request doesn't automatically mean that's implemented immediately. Sometimes, yes. Uh, sometimes it may be approved, but with a lower priority. And then uh, we develop x using agile development methods uh, and uh, sprints in, in practice, and we implement new items from the from top of the backlog. And then uh, we, like I said, we release new releases a couple of times a year, and uh, everyone will get the new releases at, at the same time. So the NIS members don't have any kind of any kind of uh, priority in, in that. But when when new release comes out, it's available to everyone at the same time, the members and the community. And at, at this point, uh, you might be thinking, so why to come become a member of NIS if uh, everything is, is open? You can submit enhancement requests feature requests and, and get the new versions of the software at the same time with the members. Well, um, th that's, that's one way to use Xroad, of course, and it, it's okay. Uh, but the benefit of the membership is that the members uh, participate in decision making. Uh, they decide how the features are prioritized and what's the long-term roadmap for Xroad. So uh, if you are just a community member using the software, you can get everything what co comes out from the pipeline. Uh, but if you are a member, then you get to decide what comes out of the pipeline and, and when. So that's the biggest difference there. And uh, if you are interested in this uh, development model in, in more, more detail, uh, it's pretty well documented on, on GitHub, so more details are available there. Thank you for listening. Now it's time for questions. Yeah, that's a good question, so let's go back here. So this x -Road Central server, mm, the role of the central server is to be uh, kind of the member register of the ecosystem. So when new organizations and security servers join, they are registered on the central server. Then uh, they are added to the configuration and that configuration data is distributed to the security servers that use it uh, to process the messages. And uh, in practice, the security servers download the configuration data from the central server and then use the local copy when processing messages. And that local copy has an expiration uh, period that can be uh, configured centrally. So by default, when you install Xroad, uh, the, the expiration period is, is like 20 minutes but you can increase it as much as you want. For example, in Finland, uh, it has been increased to 72 hours, so that if, uh, if everything breaks down on Friday afternoon, you don't have to worry about it during the weekend. Well, hopefully it's not the Christmas weekend, <laughs> uh, but still, you, you could increase it even more. And um, uh, so, the central server, it can be unavailable, uh, as long as the security servers have valid copy of the configuration locally, and that uh, time period it, it can be configured. Yeah. Yes. In what languages is that uh, Mostly in Java, but uh, the front end is uh, written in uh, JavaScript. Well, uh, 
the security server, it, it supports uh, Docker and then Ubuntu 20 and Ubuntu 18 and Red Hat 7 and Red Hat 8. The central server doesn't support uh, Docker for, for production. But for, for the members, the most important component is the security server. So uh, it's, uh, the central server It's run by the X-Road operator. So the, the, the owner of the ecosystem, if, if it's a national deployment, it can be a government agency, or if it's a business domain specific uh, deployment, then it can be, uh, well, one organization within that domain may be chosen by, by the domain members. Uh, currently, uh, XROAD supports only synchronous data exchange, but we are working on supporting asynchronous data exchange as well. Yes, exactly. So, in, in uh, one very good practical example is that let's say that this consumer side information system, it, it could be a, a state, state portal where a citizen logs in, and in the state portal, the citizen wants to see uh, what kind of data uh, the population register uh, system has about me. Uh, so, uh, in the portal, first the citizen authenticates, we, we, then we know the identity, uh, and uh, the uh, portal sends a request to the, the consumer side security server uh, using the uh, identifier of the citizen as a request parameter, then the request is sent to the service provider side security server that checks the access rights, verifies signatures, so on. And then there is the provider side information system, that's the population register service. It processes the request, returns the re response to service provider side security server, which is then forwarded to service consumer side security server and back to the portal and visualized to the citizen. Right. Uh, yeah, so uh, the uh, the security servers or X road they it, it doesn't really know anything about the the user's identity uh, so it, it's the responsibility of the of the information systems uh, so it's it's kind of good and it's kind of bad bad in a sense that you you need to have uh, an authentication and and identity system in place but uh, it's it's also good because at least in Europe and especially in, in the Nordic countries, we already have those. And it means that you can take X-Road and use your existing identity systems without making any changes to them, because X-Road, they are kind of invisible to X-Road, so it means that you can use any existing system, like in Finland and Estonia and in Iceland, they all, all have different kind of identity systems and authentication methods, and they all work with X-Road without any changes to the identity systems, nor X-Road. Yeah, and of, of course, X-Road also, also ensures uh, that, yeah, that the da data doesn't exchange and provide, provides the evidence. But, but yeah, it's kind of a, well, a dummy pipe in a sense that it doesn't care what kind of data you, you put in. Yeah, that, that's a good question. So about service discovery. Uh, so uh, usually the X-Road ecosystem also has a service catalog. That is a web portal that contains a list of all the organizations and, and their services and service descriptions of the, of the ecosystem. And uh, that's, that's the way how to, how to discover services. It, it really depends on the implementation. Uh, the, the reason why the service catalog component is not present in these slides is that it's not uh, part of the X-Road core. So X-Road provides interfaces to collect the service uh, related information system, uh, information from the security servers, but then uh, the visualization layer, the portal component, it's not part of XROAD, but the XROAD operators, they usually implement their own. Finland has its own, Estonia has its own, and Iceland has its own, but, but usually they, they go to the endpoint level, because if, if you don't provide those details, then it's difficult to find the services. Yeah, mm, well, uh, nothing prevents you using X-Road also for that 
but then uh, if it's if it's the company's internal network only then uh, you can use it you could even have here let's say multiple information systems behind this one security server and you could use the security server to exchange data internally within this organization. Technically, it, it would be okay. Uh, well, maybe the benefit would be that you could use uh, the same uh, communication mechanisms internally that you use with external partners, and I mean the X-Road identifiers. Uh, but then, uh, it of course, it's, it adds additional overhead, so... Yeah, I know that in Estonia some organizations use it, uh, but it's, it's not so common. But then if you have a big international corporation that has, let's say, multiple data centers in, in different locations, in that case, using X-Road uh, to exchange data uh, between information systems located in different data centers, then it, it makes a lot more sense. Okay. If there aren't any more questions, then thank you for listening and have a nice rest of the day.